Well, listen, no wonder you have written a book because, boy, do you have a story to tell. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, we, we said just a, a tiny snippet there. I mean, brought up in a home with, fair to say, a very controlling father. Would that be right or not? Eh, I don't know. He was like a father, so... <laughs> like, kind of as control. Although, like, what was really diff the difference is my father's Senegalese and I was an American child. Okay. Mm. And I think that was really the friction in our relationship because he, he comes from a completely different set of rules and a different, different culture. Well, yeah, the cultural difference. I mean, I believe um, he, he brought a, a cousin in, a female cousin, <laughs> um, but actually it was his wife. It actually was right? both. It was both his was cousin both. and right. his wife. Yeah. Uh -huh. he, um, so he married my mom and then about five years later he remarried or he secondly married. He didn't remarry, he just married again. We just didn't know about it. <laughs> so was that bigamously or was he from a sort of polygamy sort of family? I mean, it's bigamy um, if we're here, if we're in America, but in Senegal where he's from, he's just an average man. Right. And how did your ah. mom respond to that? Oh, she responded by leaving him. Right, OK. And yeah. left you there? Ah. No, she didn't. No, no, she didn't leave him. <laughs> no, 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 my, um, no, my, uh, my mom's very American yeah. and wasn't cool with that, like, second wife. And so we all <laughs> left my dad. Fair dues. And I know that you've had your own battles with mental illness as well, haven't you? But so how are you, you know, how are you dealing with, the, with, with, with those? Do you still have episodes now? Mmm, episodes. Well, like I'll say, like, I... So, yes, I have uh, depression. And uh, it is... It's probably going to be with me for the rest Same of my life. Same as mine. It's just you have to manage it. Yes, exactly. Um, I'm, I, I'm actually... It's... Yeah, it's actually a lot easier to deal with once you can pinpoint what it is. It's mm -hmm. like, why do I feel blue? Like, it's not just that I'm feeling sad. No, it isn't like, about no, that. No, it's a clinical thing that's happening with me that will happen to me for the bulk of my life. And thank God I'm aware of it so I can keep Enjoy it the check. good times in between. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're honestly, like, the bulk of my life is good. I'm on TV right now, well, you well, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have moved on to such positivity, haven't you? I mean, precious, wonderful film. You were raving about it this morning, Amazing. Uh, Nadia. Mm -hmm. Nomination for an Oscar. You had a strange. Why is that a bigger deal than a BAFTA, you guys? I was also. Oh, I don't BAFTA. know. Yes. We are so <laughs> kind of dazzled by yeah. America, I suppose. But that that strange detour you had in the middle of working on phone lines. What was that all about? Oh, in the middle. So. <laughs> okay. So yes, it's I... improvisational skills. <laughs> oh, I love this yeah, story. No, it's improv. So yeah, I did phone sex, you guys. I write all about it in the book, and I, you know, can do the voices if you want. Can you please, please do, do a book? <laughs> Keep it clean. Depends on the call. Like, you would have to keep the guy. If it was a guy, you'd have to keep the guy on the phone. So it wasn't about yeah. It was getting him done, off. Yeah. It was getting him on, keeping exactly. him on. Exactly. Keep it. You want to keep them on the line, like you're tracking their location. Like that's you're not actually tracking their location. You're tracking coins. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like yeah. The sooner well, you get them off, the sooner you get them off. You know what yeah, I mean? We know what you mean. We know what you mean, Debbie. We all know what you mean. At the time I started working there, I was like 21, and I only did it for like two months before I was like promoted because I'm amazing. But <laughs> that's my I, girl. I'm amazing, you guys. And like that was the voice. So I had a really small voice, and it's like, oh my god, like I'm like, oh hi. I'm just like, you know, hanging out because my roommate is in class, and I just decided not to go today because I'm a little sick. But I'm so much better because you called. What are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Psychic had told you that your life was going to change in the way that it did. Well, the first, so like the first psychic that told me that I was like going to grow up and be famous, which is like a weird thing. Like I know like people like fame. And I just sort of, I always thought that was a weird thing. Like even as, so like I was nine years old and my dad's cousin wife. Uh, <laughs> 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 she was a psychic. She would. I, she might still be, but like she certainly did it. Like Adam. I don't know she what she's might. up to now. I don't know. We don't keep in touch. But she. Um. She predicted. She, I had her do a session for me when I was like nine or ten years old, and she said that I was going to be famous. And I was like, Do you mean my mom's gonna be famous? Because my mom's a singer. And she said, No, you're gonna be famous, but your mom's gonna be famous because of your fame. And I was like, This does not compute. But she was right, so I can't be mad at cousin mom. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
that you actually, Barack Obama thinks you're the bomb. Apparently. <laughs> I was like, really, really, I was like, yeah, Barack Obama said the word bomb to me. <laughs> Which, like, I didn't think was allowed. Like, you, I couldn't have, look, if I had said the word bomb to Barack Obama, I would be in Guantanamo Bay right now. <laughs> but he said I was a bomb, like a 90s, like, sitcom dad. You know, like, honestly, like, so I, I, like, met them at the White House, like, for this correspondence um, dinner before the whole country went to hell. But... <laughs> <laughs> before it turned into a reality show. But it was, like, meeting... It was, like, I refer to him as Uncle Barry and Auntie Mishi. Yeah. Do they know that you do? Uh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> No one's come after me yet. They seem, I bet they would be fine. They're like, they're a lot like, mm -hmm. like my aunt and uncle at my like graduation party. Yeah. Oh. They're like nice people. I think we all feel a bit like yeah, oh, lovely that. Lovely people. Lovely people.